go over here. Whew. Nice little one there. Another one on the old flipping bait. Can't beat that man with the big stick here in that braid squeal. If that don't put a smile on your face, you might need to check your pulse because that is so fun. We're flipping, doing all kinds of flipping today. Flipping 101, I got a couple different sticks here. I got two sticks with me. I have a couple different flipping setups, a couple different baits. Just a good old summertime flipping session here. Right now we're flipping wild rice. This river system that we're on has a bunch, a bunch of different cover for these fish. Hard cover, there's uh, logs, log jams, pads, everything, you name it. And we're flipping them up out of it today. That's a good start right there. Hopefully, I got a feeling they're gonna get a little bit bigger than that. There's some big ones in here. We're gonna get him back and uh, get back to it. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, that was <laughs> so cool. Woo. Getting a little better. Oh my gosh, he absolutely crushed that thing. I hope you guys can see that. Oh my gosh, my rod tip just took off. I kept shaking it, shaking it. Just in a little sweet spot right here, these giant wild rice fields. They can all be super similar, all look the same, but there's always those sweet spots that are in there. And that right here is what we're looking at. There's a little pad patch in here. It's not very big, only 15 feet by 10 feet maybe. And those little spots that just stand out are absolute attractors for these bass. They just gravitate towards that type of stuff. It's just something different. When you get in this, this type of situation where there's just miles and miles of the same stuff over and over again, that is what draws these guys in, those areas that are just different. Get him back here. Whew. Oh, come here. Oh, gosh. What do we got? Oh, it's a good one. Oh, come here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come here. Oh. <laughs> that is what the 7.4 Heavy does right there, man. You can reef on them, flip those big ones, and look how tall he is. Oh my gosh. They're just beefcakes right now. They've been sitting up in this grass. <laughs> look how thick he is to the tail. They're just sitting up in this grass feeding. It's those summer months, those dog days. Spring is gone. It's been hot, hot, hot. And these fish are buried up in the grass right now, getting away from the sun. We're starting to get a little sunshine here. When we started out, it was a little bit cloudy and now clouds are starting to break. Just trying to really pick this apart. Sometimes that cloud cover can make a huge difference. We've noticed it on this fishery before, but we may be figuring a little something out here. That is a real good one. We're gonna get him back. What we're looking at right here is a point where the river splits. Um, and it forms this beautiful point right here. That's the stuff that I'm really looking for. I was en route to that, flipped up on this point and whacked that good one there. But again, it's just observant. Being observant when doing this is such, such a huge deal. And you don't wanna get stuck in a rut, try fishing the same stuff over and over again. Definitely when you get dialed into a deal, then that's a little bit different once you can really get into a pattern and lock things down. But when picking it apart like we are right now, um, just keeping an open mind is big. That's one thing I'm really big on, um, especially as a collegiate angler um, fishing competitively, always just trying to find the next thing, be observant, keeping an open mind, um, never getting stuck into one thing. Uh, it's, oh my gosh, there's another one. That's right where I just cut the last one. Oh, he's not nearly the size. I'm gonna drop the talons just so that way we can be nice and stealthy here. Just a little pip squeak. But that was literally the same flip just from a little bit different angle where I just caught that nice one. He's just a little butterball. Look how they're built. That's just ridiculous. So much fun flipping them out of this stuff with this heavy rod, heavy line, reefing them out of here big beefy flipping hook it's honestly one of my most favorite ways to catch largemouth uh, when these summer months come around man getting that big stick it's like i said it's warm right now we are in the middle of summer in this area starting to get to the tail end of summer the grass is becoming as tall as it's going to get right now it's topped out uh, almost everywhere in this area all kinds of grass uh, the cabbage the wild rice Everything is about tapped out, getting to where it's gonna be. 
And when that happens, that is the time to get the flipping sticks out. It's just a lure for these bass for a couple different reasons. The biggest thing is just cover. This stuff just provides such good shade. It's comfortable for them. This is where they feel they're most comfortable. Um, they know that they can ambush any prey that comes by. Another reason why they're in this stuff is just because what they feed on also gravitates towards this. There's really no better way to target bass in this type of cover than with this Texas rig like this. So as you've seen today, we've, we've stretched the string on a, quite a few. Uh, it's been a blast. I'm, I just wanna take a second to run you guys through uh, both my setups here. This is mainly what I do. These two setups are really all that you need when you're flipping this heavy cover like this. It's something I like to keep super cut and dry, super simple, but there are a few key things to this setup that are important when flipping and pitching like this. To start, I'm flipping two different plastics here. Um, this one here is an Excite. This is a super cool little flipping bait. Something that's a little bit different. This bait has, as you can see right there, it has a slot built into it. It's something that you don't see in a lot of baits and that gives it a really different rigging style. You can rig this thing the traditional way like you would any other beaver style bait. But today I've been rigging it where I'm actually coming through vertically parallel with the bait that way. Rigging it through that way and hiding that hook up into that belly slot there uh, gives that bait a really cool look uh, on the fall. It's different than a lot of other baits, which is something that I like, trying to get the edge on other guys. And this is a cool bait to do that. Like you can see that fish is super, super clean. Uh, that's a big thing that I'm looking for when fishing this heavy cover like this. I want to fish as clean as fishing as possible. This stuff can be really sticky, uh, can hang on to a lot of baits, but this is just a super sleek design. That hook hides away. It's not catching a bunch of junk as I'm pulling it through that grass. Fish is super, super clean. On the other hand, I got the good old tried and true, trusty, dusty Z-Hog. I have this one on the little bit lighter setup. Again, this is just that standard flipping style bait. Um, can't go wrong, that thick body. Um, you're not constantly having your hook pop out. That hook is staying true, staying solid. Again, super compact. That's my biggest thing that I'm looking for in flipping this type of stuff. I want compact, sleek, and slender. Although this does have some appendages to give it that kick, just a super compact setup. I can fish it super, super cleanly through this grass. As far as these two setups, um, there's a couple things I'm doing different between the two. One, this is my lighter weight setup. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, I like to keep it simple with two, a lighter setup and a heavier setup. This one here is a half ounce. This rod here is a three quarter. Um, as I'm going along, I'm seeing a lot of different kinds of cover. Some of the stuff like you can see right behind me, super, super thick. This is where I'm grabbing that three quarter, getting that thing up in the wild rice, up in these thicker mats where things are really, really thick. But then as I'm going along and I find some of this more sparse cover or some of these lay downs, that's where I'm going for the lighter weight. If I was to try and flip this weight up in the thick stuff, I'm not gonna win that battle. Uh, that's where that big weight comes to play. But this is really nice for flipping this edge flipping this thinner grass, and again, like I said, log jams, lay downs, uh, it's just really nice to have those two options. It's something that you don't have to overthink. Uh, you can get a million rods out with a million different weights if you want, um, and there definitely is a time and a place when weight can be really specific. I've seen it before where a three quarter gets bit more than the five eighths, something like that. But starting here, um, just starting at those basics, the half and three quarter, the weights that everyone's got in their box, um, that's the great place to start. And again, it varies on cover as well. Um, it's all up to the conditions that you're faced. Uh, just take some time fishing around, feeling it out, um, and you'll know pretty quick if you are uh, overweight or underweight or if you're just right with what you're fishing. Now onto the hook. This is just a standard flipping hook, but it's not just any standard flipping hook. This is a new hook from BKK. It's made out of hypercarbon steel. Crazy sharp, crazy strong. Uh, like you've seen, I've been reefing on them today with this thing, and I mean reefing, trying to break the rod pretty much. Getting those fish out, and that thing is not bent. It's just like it is out the package. Still crazy, crazy sharp. You can see it sticking there. 
super sweet new hook. It's got that good keeper on it. That's another thing that's important that I look for uh, in a flipping hook is the right style keeper. If it's too big, you can tear up the bait and then you just go through a whole package like nothing. If it's too small, then you're constantly fighting your bait all day, constantly having to fix things and that's just not efficient. So again, looking for that right keeper. This has that resin keeper, super durable, not losing that thing. It's not slipping. It's holding those baits in place. Uh, as far as line goes, I like a 50 pound line. To some people that may be a little underpowered, but I find that once you get too high up, once you start to hit the 65s, the 80s, personally myself, it just doesn't feel as good. I think you lose a lot of sensitivity uh, with that heavy line, which is important when fishing this stuff. Sometimes in that thick stuff, you lose a lot of sensitivity with your line laying over this thick grass. So again, having that 50 really helps you feel those bites. And I think that the 50 also is kind of that perfect middle ground to where it cuts through this stuff. It's coarse enough that it cuts through this grass. But again, it's not super thick. It's not like fishing on a piece of rope. That 50 pound is what I always go for when I'm flipping. Even the super, super heavy stuff, I'm going for the 50 pound. Um, these rods, uh, just your basic flipping sticks. A 7.4 heavy here, a 7.6 heavy here. Uh, that heavy action is good um, for reefing those fish out. Both these rods have just a little bit of tip. Another thing that I really like when flipping heavy cover like this, that hook is not going to come out when you have that little bit of tip. It also helps you be accurate when flipping. That is something that is very important when fishing this heavy cover. Sometimes it can just be a tiny little pocket that those fish are sitting in, you know, sometimes like the size of a cup that you gotta be hitting. And having that tip allows you to be accurate. Again, uh, with that high speed gear ratio reel, uh, seven gear ratio and eight gear ratio, Again, once you combine all those things together, um, it's a really a simple setup, but there are a few key things that I do look for. Uh, and those are just some of those little nuances that I like in my flipping setups. Oh, oh boy. That's another pretty decent one. Not the giant, but I'm gonna kick this out here. Come here. Ooh. Look at how they are built. That is ridiculous. He is not that big by any means, but he's built like a bluegill. Just <laughs> nuts. They're built so cool in this system. And then I was just coming down this edge, switched up to the other setup that I have here, the little bit lighter. Uh, same deal, same flipping hook, just a little bit lighter weight. Uh, it's good to have that two prong approach just so that way I'm kind of ready for any scenario I face. Keep it really simple. Those two rods are really all you need when doing this. Heavy weight and a little bit less heavier weight. On that rod I'm running a three quarter and on this rod I'm running a half. And that's all you really need when doing this flip and set up in this kind of scenario here. We're gonna get him back. So I just caught that one there in this here backwater. And um, now I'm just kind of taking my time just picking it apart. Uh, like I said, when you get in these river systems like this and even in lakes a lot of times too, but especially in these river systems, they tend to really group up. That current holds those fish up. Sometimes you'll find those areas that just set up so perfect it just draws a big concentration of fish. So when I do get bit in an area that looks really fishy like this, I like to slow down, take my time like you can see. I just have the boat stopped here up in the grass and I'm just flipping around, just picking this thing apart. And another thing I like to do, even when I'm just going down trying to find an area, I like to move fast but also be stealthy especially when I'm picking it apart like this, or like I said, moving fast, I like to be stealthy. Uh, it helps you get a lot, a lot of bites, whether it's a pressured fishery or not. Tight quarters fishing like this, I think it really, really helps just being as quiet as possible. Trimming up the motor so that way you're not dragging, keeping the trolling motor on a low setting. Right now, I have it set at about four. I'm just kind of slowly clipping along through here taking my time, trying to be as quiet as possible. Um, with that, another way, another thing that's really important to me is how you drop your bait in the water. It's sometimes something that is a little bit overlooked. And sometimes when you just get in a monotonous, you know, get in a rut sometimes, going down a stretch, you can sometimes forget about it. But making sure that you try and land that bait quietly um, is something too that helps, especially for these fish in a little bit shallower water trying to make that bait just smoothly land, as quiet of a splash as possible, 
Helps not spook those fish. Also seems to help you get a lot of bites. Just flipping around with the good old Texas rig. That's really all the system is. That's just a couple things to keep in mind to help you, you know, put a few more fish in the boat when doing this.